I'm yeah. also going to hula hoop in the shower now, too, though. I think both are great ideas. Yeah, right now, hula so hoop and boomerang. We'll just yeah, bring all the outdoor to- lawn darts next into the Listeners shower. Listeners at home, <laughs> it's very important you know that next time Heath takes a shower, he's going to bring one of those indoor boomerangs in and disappoint <laughs> himself when he gets a paper cut on his penis. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do under the leg. <laughs> You guys got to do Skeptocrat without me this week. Tell everyone I'm on vacation again. I wear a bathing again. suit in the shower sometimes. I'll be fine. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie. So you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright. And sitting about 600 miles to my left is my good friend, uh, just a truly wonderful person who I genuinely respect and admire for just so many reasons. (laughs) Anna Bosnick, like serious moment. It's it's really, really, it's an honor to work with you. It really is. Serious moment. Anna, welcome back. Well, go fuck yourself, Heath. (laughs) No, I, I hated this movie, but uh, it's it's sweet of you to say that. Thanks for thanks for just <laughs> stepping all over that fucking joke. <laughs> that was all right. Cool. That's how this day is going to go. <laughs> Lovely. So that's all the stuff you wanted to say about me. Great. And oh, also no. <laughs> uh, sitting the same 600 miles to my left with a beer helmet full of mango nectar in one can and <laughs> insulin in another can is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli. How's it going, buddy? I told you you could have some if you wanted to share. I don't know why you're being this way. <laughs> I want my entire dedicated helmet for me. Whatever. You can put your, get your own helmet. I, I don't want to get into this. We're not having this fight on air. <laughs> All right. So we'll circle back to that later. Uh, <laughs> off the record. Great. Both of you. We'll talk to both of you later. <laughs> about, about our feet. So uh, tell us, Anna. What are we going to be breaking down today? Well, first of all, Heath, you're very nice and tall. Okay. Uh, very all right. Nice. So nice and tall. That's what I always <laughs> wanted. <laughs> we watched The Devil Within Her. It's the story of a woman suffering from terrible postpartum depression so badly that she is convinced that her baby is possessed by the devil. And spoiler alert, she will be so convincing that everyone around her, including the baby, will agree with her. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. That's that's going to be the movie. Mm-hmm. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love those movies about spooky possessed kids, but you've never met or seen a baby <laughs> live, you <laughs> will love this movie. And I, I hate to start <laughs> our fabulous review of this epic film with a correction, Anna. The baby we will learn, is not possessed by a devil. That's true. That is It's true. possessed by a little person who used to work with her. <laughs> who might be the devil? Who might Ish. be the devil? She manages... We'll get to it. We'll get to it. This movie does think that little people are the devil. <laughs> it's I think. very certain of that. Yep. Yeah. Very important. This is this movie's description on Amazon. It's on Amazon Prime. It's free. You must watch it. Here's the description, quote, a promiscuous showgirl's firstborn is cursed by a sinister dwarf. After a series of deaths, she realizes that her son is possessed by the devil. <laughs> so that's the <End> description. <laughs> that's where we start with this film. Oh, yep. man. All right. And uh, <laughs> is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at parking? I'm going to start with parking. <laughs> yes. Everyone in this movie parks what like me. What fuck right is happening? Right up on the curb. Like, like they run into like the, the nearest fire hydrant if they can find it. It's insane. It's They try to parallel park like 19 times. It's mangled <laughs> every single time. They're at a 45 degree angle. They're literally on the curb. That's correct. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> yep. They have like three spots of space and they like chop the car into pieces to somehow <laughs> take all three. I was... Furious watching this movie. The parking is a hate crime. It's so the, the movie should be prosecuted in the Hague for parking like they do. Sorry, it's triggering. Anna, do you have a 
a best worst. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, no worries. I'm going to say best worst baby reactions because they throughout this movie, they try to make this baby look sinister. But really, the baby just has the best deadpan in the entire <laughs> <Yeah>. world. <laughs> the baby is just a baby. <laughs> it's just a baby. The baby's an actual baby. And they're like, snarl now. And he's like, baby? He's like, hey, I'm a baby. <laughs> Sup, dudes? Which I'm is a great baby. because it's always like, Bwah, bwah, bwah. And then the camera pans to a baby being like, yep, still baby. Still yep. Yep. still just a baby doing baby <laughs> things. It's like they caught him right before he takes a yawn. Yep. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> See, and on that note, I was going to give this best worst monster. Now, oh. we spoiled this a little bit already. But again, just just to clarify for everyone listening at home, the big bad of this movie, the evil behind it all is... The soul of a little person. <laughs> yep. That will be the monster that is eventually yep. defeated. A yep. little person's soul. <laughs> and do you think they think that little people have evil magic in real reality? Because that seems to be the message. 100% yes. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say, do they think little people have little souls? And that is also true. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, we haven't exaggerated at all. Mm -mm. Um, so mm -mm. we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll tell you all about Foes Mary's Baby, also known as <laughs> The Devil Within Her, also known as I Didn't Want to Be Born, but they had to change that in the American version of this British movie and call it The Devil Within Her. Oh. God. And so I says to him, not if I know the nanny. Brilliant, yeah. Hey, sorry, uh, Nigel. Oh, hey. Hey, Edna. Mm. Oh, would you look at that, Edna? It's Frank from America. He's going to make our movie script, he is. Brilliant, yeah. Right, right, yeah. So about that, um, I just finished reading the first draft. And what did and you think? Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. So is the baby like super strong or does does the devil give him powers because you know in the movie the baby well the baby just does a ton of stuff that babies very literally cannot do mm, i'm not sure about that what, what do you what do you mean right okay so you have the baby scratch somebody right like three times in the movie like scratch him really hard yeah with his baby claws mm -hmm. baby claws Nope. Okay, right there. Um, babies don't have claws. Well, not now. They fall out, don't they? What? Don't they? Yeah. Nope. No. 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 They do not. Okay. So, probably a dumb question, but this just occurred to me. Has either of you ever seen a baby, like an actual baby child in real life? <laughs> mm. Have I ever seen an actual baby? Actual baby, yeah. Yeah, have you? No, no, I have not. I have not seen Okay, baby. yeah. Mm. Still going to make the movie. Uh, this is 1974, but just, I mean, check out a baby in real life, okay? Just like, oh, look at one. No promises, mate. No promises, yeah. Is she okay? Oh, Edna? No, yeah. she got kicked by the right. queen's horse as a kid. Isn't that right, Edna? Horse kid. See? Yep, got it, got it. You're going to star in this. <laughs> so you're saying she's just allowed to ignore my keep out sign? Yeah, dude, you're 38 years old. Of course, that is irrelevant. This is ridiculous. I, I don't know why I even asked you. Where's Eli? Uh, I'm sure he'll be here somewhere any minute. Hey, hey, you guys ready hey. to record? Uh, yeah, I guess what? What's on your head? <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah, I'm uh, um, wearing my hair a little differently lately, so I guess. Uh, would we say your hair? Keith. What? It's it's fine. Sixty six percent of men lose their hair by age thirty five. Uh, Eli, why don't you just try four hymns? What's for hymns? Oh, it's a, a one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA approved products to help treat hair loss. Is this going to be like that time you guys bought those magic beans again? For the last time, Anna, we invested in, in those invested. magic beans. It's, it's an asset. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Uh, also, Four Hymns offers prescription solutions backed by science. And if you order now, our listeners get started with the Hymns Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today, right now, while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy somewhere else. Just go to fourhims.com slash gam. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash G-A-M. Fourhims.com slash gam, huh? You know what, Heath? We'll give it a try. Eli, you can take that thing off your head. But you said it made me look like Ryan Gosling. I said it makes you look like a gosling. Oh. Yeah, yeah I see that. Like a baby yeah. duck. Yep. Mm-hmm. Eat your cereal. <laughs> no. And Fuck we're back. Fuck you. Oh, and, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, all right. That's sorry. We're fun. recording again. So I oh, apologize. You're tall. Okay. You're tall. <laughs> all right. And uh, we actually are back. And we're going to start off with a woman in the delivery room screaming, but not exactly. Uh, mm. Apparently, Joan Collins, she is the female lead of this movie. She couldn't pull off a believable scream at this point in her career. And instead, kept making porn noises. Yep. Yeah. So they used a Wilhelm scream, but not <laughs> really. Like, they didn't have the budget for the genuine <laughs> Wilhelm scream. So it's just like an absurd, unrelated noise. I don't I don't know what it yeah, was. Yeah, this woman is orgasming a baby out of her, and everyone in the room is trying to hide how jealous they are. <laughs> I just feel like at this point in Joan Collins' career, when they told her to fake a noise, she was like, I got it, darlings. Don't worry. I've been in the business for minutes at this point. (laughs) But it didn't work well. And like, I don't know, the guy at the Foley table was like, I'll just move this saw back and forth. That'll be the scream. I don't know. It made no sense noise wise. Yeah. Also, I want to talk about this operating room because she's giving birth in the 1970s and the most advanced piece of medical technology <laughs> in existence at that point is the blood pressure sleeve. Oh. So they, they really zoom in on that one. Oh, they're obsessed with it. That was terrifying. Yeah, the whole thing. I mean, the blood pressure sleeve was like, I, I knew what it was, but it was connected to, I believe, a grandfather clock on the wall <laughs> as the gauge. <laughs> It was enormous, and yeah. the entire rest of this delivery room was terrifying. They, they were like, all right, time to inject you with a pint of caulk from this <laughs> enormous caulk gun that yes. we have. They just hit her with a Snapple bottle-sized syringe. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what was in that syringe because it makes sense that it would be like, Something like a sedative or something to calm her down, but it does not calm her down. It actually starts making the world like do be all tossy turny. So like, did they just inject her with crystal meth? Yeah. Historically mm. speaking, it was that or thalidomide. <laughs> so. <Yeah. laughs> and as soon as it's in her, they immediately like start playing like a bow chicka wow wow track behind her, which is yep. insane. <laughs> yeah. Very confusing. Yeah. Uh, also, what the fuck were all those tools on the doctor's table? Yeah, a forceps. Oh, man. I wrote in my notes, this movie's so old, we see a doctor using a forceps and the movie doesn't even acknowledge it. By the way, uh, for those of you who are wondering why your older brothers and sisters look like the Coneheads, it's because of forceps. <laughs> because they were delivered with large pliers. This, yep. yeah, yeah. This doctor's just like scalpel, javelin, chainsaw like what the fuck was yeah. happening soup ladle <laughs> he like he, <laughs> he sticks something in her and just leaves it there like a serving spoon and a pile of mashed potatoes at some point <laughs> it's just like ah well i need my hands free for this other thing so i'm just gonna leave this here lady <laughs> the lunch ladies in a prison are like all right show some care come on chives what doctor did you say chives i did say chives are you yeah. tossing a salad down there what's going on <laughs> And now we're going to cut to the protagonist of the movie playing the game that Heath plays at dinners, so I have to take his coasters away. Oh, this is the best table game. Whatever. That's, first of all, I was doing great. You did not have to take those away. I was crushing it. I did one two-handed. I did double flips. It was when you went to other tables and borrowed their coasters that we drew the line. (laughs) People were into it. I think I got a lot of people into that game that day. It's fine. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. But yeah, he's flipping a matchbook. He's just, he's like, it's off the edge of the table and he's doing like a flip to try to land it on its edge. It's, that's an awesome game. <laughs> kind of like the coaster game I play. And they spend so much time on it because this actor was very clearly like, no, no, no. Like, wait until I get it and then we'll start to see it. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yeah. Yep. And so the doctor comes out and he's like, congratulations, it's a boy. And he's like, how's my wife? And the doctor's like, who cares? And he's like, yeah, it's fair. <laughs> Get you another pint of martini from the hospital bar that we have. <laughs> this doctor and this dude are, which, by the way, I have the, the dad down as Italian John Cleese. <laughs> Their ties, I don't know if this was a thing. I'm sure it was a thing that I just didn't know about. I'm too, too young to know about. But their ties are the size of my actual dog. <laughs> yep. Madge is not a small dog. And they are whiter than their faces. I don't understand. Yeah, they just have airplane propellers around their neck yep, at this point in history. Much, yep, yeah, accurate. <laughs> so, so we... We cut to mom cuddling baby for the first time, and it's time for the no, first. No, we don't cut to her cuddling baby. We cut to mom weeping maniacally with baby beside her on the bed. Right. And when she turns, <laughs> we see why, and it's because we have seen our first, but not our last, baby attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she turns around, there's a gash on her face, and I was like, Booyah, this is a werewolf baby movie. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but then it pans over to baby and he's got like this drip of blood coming out of his mouth and all over his face. And I'm like, oh, vampire baby movie? <laughs> baby takes off a mask like Vega from yeah. Street Fighter 2. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps you guessing. I'm, so guess what I'm trying to say is Team Jacob baby. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we should probably point this out. This newborn baby is... I want to say 15 years old. Yeah. 6'4", 250. Yeah. yeah. Heath, it's you. Right. And the movie tries to explain this by being like, oh, he's so big for his age. But like, one, he's not like big enough to bite a chunk out of your <laughs> eyeball big. He's just too old to be a newborn baby. Do you need to be like one but not zero to work in the business? What, <laughs> what was happening there? Yeah, it's very confusing. Just get a baby. Yeah. But yeah, so they spend a little bit of time blaming her. They ask if she was cuddling it too tightly as though babies tend to scratch and bite like your neighbor's cat. <laughs> yeah, this was immediately like, oh, all right, it's probably your dumb wife's fault. She probably smothered the baby trying to hold it too hard with her <laughs> stupid lady arms. This is how the doctors <laughs> oh. will deal with the female population throughout. Well, I was going to say the movie, but the decade and decades preceding and yeah. a couple yep. decades later, too. Yeah, you're probably imagining it. Go sit in the hall. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he says, you know what? It's probably not the best idea if your wife breastfeeds, considering how bloodthirsty this baby is. And he's like, no, doctor, you must allow our baby to gnaw my wife's tits off. You must. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, she really wants to breastfeed. And doctor's like, again, um, the bear attack. I feel like <laughs> we need to dwell on it. Like, I don't know, put the baby in a river, have it grab raw salmon with its giant claws. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I said, just throw a steak in the crib with him. He'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Jurassic Park? Just lower a, a yeah. goat? I don't know. <laughs> to your baby. And now it's time for the annual dairy parade. Protein parade? Was it dairy? Yeah, it says dairy it was, parade. Oh, it said dairy. Okay. I thought it was like different. Because it also said fish. Types of foods like like, sh like showing down. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, this is the 1970s and they had invented cheese like six years ago. So they yeah. were still pretty psyched about it. It was parade worthy. <laughs> I So I'm not old enough and Noah's not here to answer this because, you know, but in the 70s, was this what parades were like? Just a bunch of people in the back of a pickup truck? Yes. Yes, 100%. 100%. Yeah, must yeah. have been. Wow. Even in England. All right. I just want to point out, too, that the Dairy Parade sign, if you rewind and watch it slowly enough, very clearly written in blood. There is no <laughs> other substance that sign could be written in. And we're seeing the 1970s cars. Everyone's oh, just driving around in Hot Wheels. The British vintage cars. They are so wee. They look like regular people cars, but they're tiny. Their horns even sound tiny. Like he goes beep, beep, and it sounds like magic squeaky toys. Like it's yeah. insane. <laughs> squagoo, squagoo. <laughs> so right, they park their car several feet onto the curb. God damn it. This was the best parking of the movie, by the way. Yeah. They clearly ramped it up 
to trigger me personally. <laughs> <laughs> All of my notes for this section are, do you think that car's still there, Heath? I bet it's still there. Oh I bet it's stopping you from getting into the space because of the weird angle. <laughs> I'm going to disassemble it and then reassemble it on the roof of some building. I don't know, something. God. Listeners, a uh, little fun behind the scenes for you. Whenever I park like that, I take a photograph and I text it to Heath Everett. <laughs> and I die a little bit inside. <laughs> yep. It's true. All right, so they... Bring the baby inside and introduce it to the nanny and the butler and the <laughs> maid and the variety of servants they have, all of whom will be unclear what they are for. Oh, and they're all like this beautiful, beautiful, perfectly reasonable sized baby that you oh. have. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, they take it into an orange monstrosity of a nursery. And every time they pan to the baby in this room, it'll be like, why? Why did you force me to sit in this oven? Like an actively on oven? It's orange everywhere. It's insane. Also, let's talk about the actually scariest thing in the movie. The 1970s crib. Oh. It's got baby head-sized gaps in the between the bars. <laughs> yep. The mobile above it is made out of asbestos and razor blades. I was just like, oh. <laughs> we find out later that it has like one of the sides will just like fall down if you press it at all. That's how you're <laughs> no. supposed to get the baby out of it. A little cigarette machine in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little ashtray. Cup holders. <laughs> but anyways, mom has given birth to that baby hours ago at this point, which means it's time for her to have a drink. Oh, yeah. Immediately. Good thing. <laughs> oh, and the nurse throws to so much shade at her for not breastfeeding. <laughs> she really does. Well, literally right after the ba baby bites her, too. So she's like, ow, he bit me. Oh, man, that was really hard. Are you going to put them on your tit yet or not? Or what? What's going on with this? Like, <laughs> Probably biting you because you're a mother who doesn't love her child and doesn't breastfeed. What? <laughs> Have you tried being a better mother? You tried being a better mother? <laughs> so, so we cut over to the living room where they're trying to figure out if anyone in the family is a demon baby. <laughs> to which the husband, the Italian John Cleese, will be like, I mean, I am Italian. Does that count as a demon? I don't know. Percentage. <laughs> Anybody tall in your family or a uh, gigantic baby with claws in your family? Anything like that? Nothing? Oh, Nobody. Uncle Gino, gigantic oh, okay. baby with claws. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. My aunt, when, it, when there was a full moon out, my aunt would get really bitey. But I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yep. And then the husband's like, okay, uh, my paternity lunch break is over. I'm going to go back to the office. Great. Yep. Bye. Cool. Darling, it's been wonderful spending these minutes with you. Back to work. Well, he gets a <laughs> phone call first, and I got to say, I'm very much like this woman because she backseat drives the shit out of that phone call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, we get our first little... Yeah, he gets a phone call from his... Well, someone. We don't know who it is yet, but um, I assumed it was his mom, but I was wrong. It's his sister later. But no, he's like, he's speaking to her in Italian. He gets all excited. She's going to come to visit. And the wife's like, you should tell her to come over. And he's like, yeah, no, I already did. That's I'm in the middle of doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically, this whole phone conversation is he's, that the baby is fat, but they're allowed to come over anyways. <laughs> like, it's really, <laughs> really fat. Which, like, is exactly, correct me if I'm wrong, what I say when people ask about Madge all the time. Like, how's Madge doing? I always say fat. That's a positive thing, clearly, yeah, for yeah, pugs and babies. For pugs and babies. Least. But it's it should be very, positive very for, like, fat. people. How are you doing? I'm fat. I'm a little fat. I'm feeling yep. fat and good. There you know. go. All right, Heath, Heath, I'm sorry I didn't call you fat. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll change that. <laughs> Thank later. you. All right. I <laughs> genuinely would prefer that to any of the adjectives that you <laughs> used or anybody <laughs> ever uses for me. You heard it, everybody. Stop calling Heath tall and start call calling him fat. fat. <laughs> Please. I feel like you're going to be a real bitch about that once it catches on. So now it's time to cut <laughs> to the groovy streets of London and somehow park worse than they did in the last scene. <laughs> We'll murder these people. Oh, my God. <laughs> Truly. This head-on parking. We're living in a society. You, It's parallel parking. You go past it, you back in. God damn it. Mm -mm. <laughs> he, just, like, he just rolls a third of the way into the house next to the stoop. <laughs> <laughs> Duck and covers out of the car. And then we also have this very weird scene where Italian father, like these two attractive women walk by and he very clearly checks out their asses. One of them just be like, hey, you ladies like new dads? <laughs> <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Is that a thing that ladies like? Yeah, that's a thing ladies like. 
Yeah, really? Yeah, wow. I don't know why I'm all excited. Okay. <laughs> I was th- I was thinking like dad bods. You like new dad bods? I've, I got a, like a medium old dad bod. We'll, we'll buy you a baby Bjorn. You could just walk around being like, where did that Timmy get off to? We'll make it work. <laughs> So yeah, he goes into work and his secretary asks how his wife is. And he's like, why does everyone keep asking me that? Damn it, I need a scotch. It's 1115. Yeah. What am I, a fucking nun? Oh, (laughs) fun fact. Yeah, fun fact. We're about to have a nun in the picture. (laughs) Also, uh, what is his job? Based on the like one sentence exposition, he's... He sells batches of silver, yep. metal, just loose yes. silver in yep. piles. He's one of those British silver dealers you hear so much <laughs> about. Okay. Do you think, oh, wait, do you think that's like a mysticism thing? Like silver g- gets rid of demon babies, like like a silver bullet? Oh, that's why the baby doesn't like him because he's got Ooh. all covered in silver dust. He's silvery. Ooh. Oh, mm. and hold on. His mm. name, the dad, is Gino. Which means like life giver, I think, etymologically. And the and the wife's name is Lucy, like Lucifer, because women are oh. evil and the cause Gino. of bad babies. Gino is f- as in short for vagino. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's short for vagino? I don't know. No. <laughs> I can't promise you much, Heath. You are putting too much thought into this movie. <laughs> So nun sister shows up and they talk in Italian for half a sentence. And then she literally goes, no, 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 only English. We will only speak English while I am here. <laughs> and then turns to screen and goes, because, you know, the movie's in English. <laughs> Darling, nobody likes the subtitles. It's very clear that we are both actors who speak ninth grade Italian at best. <laughs> yeah, maybe 10th grade English, though. I don't know. They... they... <laughs> Didn't have a lot of languages down yeah. pat. Nah. Um, meanwhile, we cut over to our main character and her sister, Mandy, has arrived. And she is wearing Vin Diesel's coat. So now we know where the origin <laughs> of that comes from. Love that coat. I like Mandy, too. I like her character. Yeah. The first thing out of her mouth is, oh, jolly good. You got a boy the first time. Now you won't have to have any more. <laughs> Probably so. won't get beheaded now. Nice. <laughs> you have value. Like having a baby is gambling. A girl pops out of the soda machine. Shit. All uh, right. Better luck next time. <laughs> All right. We'll do it again. And they are also drinking, by the way. Yeah. Just really good thing she isn't breastfeeding at this point. Yep. Drinking and smoking and oh. Man. Pint glasses. Yeah. I love this. The Lu- <laughs> Lucy is like, All right, Mandy, cool. Um, You want some scotch? And Mandy's like, Well, not before breakfast. And she's like, So scotch? I'm boring it already. <laughs> And then they drink scotch. But first she's like, do you want soda? <laughs> and this is my first reason that I love Mandy. She's like, absolutely not. I'm a grown up. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. What am I, five? No. Yeah. <laughs> Ruin the fucking scotch? No. Right. And and as they're having this lovely alcoholism contest, the baby <laughs> cries. And, and this is our, our first hint that the movie doesn't understand anything about babies. Like no one that has anything to do with this movie has ever seen a baby or heard about <laughs> yeah. a baby. Yeah. Because oh, the two characters in this scene react to the baby crying like they're not supposed to do that. Yeah, they I don't know. The, the They seem to try to make this normal, perfectly normal baby cry sound upsetting by adding just a little bit of reverb. Yeah. <laughs> Are babies supposed to cry? I feel like you're not supposed to, right? <laughs> right. That's definitely the conversation they have. They're like, yeah. oh, my, he's yelling. Did you say something to him? Let's go up and check it out. <laughs> I think that we should ferberize and just leave it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As they're going up, it sounds like the baby is throwing barrels down the stairs like Donkey Kong. Which <laughs> I which was close. really, really upset when I found out that that wasn't the case. <laughs> It's close no. to what's happening, though. Yeah, it is. It's kind of close. Yeah, sure. They get up into the baby's room, and the baby's trashed it like fucking the hotel room in Fear and Loathing. It's just going <laughs> nuts, like yelling "White Rabbit" in a tub. It's it's not a happy baby. <laughs> yeah, he, he tore the head off his doll, and she picks it up, and she's like, "Oh, this was made of only the finest asbestos." <laughs> Yeah, I wanted her to turn the baby over and he has like a full Patriots makeup face on. Being like, yeah! <laughs> like Destroy! Like the New England Patriots? Sure. Yeah, yeah sure. 
<laughs> little baby Patriots fan. I get it. Yeah. Oh, I was rooting for the baby for a little bit. That's going to ruin oh, it for me. I was rooting for the baby the entire fucking time. That's a fucking awesome baby. It's man. an awesome baby. <laughs> Fun fact, this movie, Bill Belichick's origin story. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> and Tom Brady's. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. So they go back downstairs and they have another half pint of scotch and <laughs> she confesses to her sister that she thinks the baby hates her. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure this woman has postpartum alcoholism. Like, <laughs> hmm. She says, darling, you're imagining things. And she's like, yeah, man, I am all the time. I'm literally having all the postpartum depression symptoms and nobody's saying anything because it's the 70s. And that's not a thing yet. Yeah, depression isn't a thing yet, let alone postpartum depression. The baby's mean to me. Yeah, man, it's a baby. It literally doesn't know wrong from right yet. And if you're wondering if this movie will ever, like, renege on the does the baby hate us thing, no, the baby's ongoing emotion that it will have attributed <laughs> to it is hatred. All hatred. Yep. By the way, they, again, are just drinking enormous amounts again. <laughs> and this movie turned into my favorite drinking game of all time. Oh, I, all right. Oh, I just tried to drink along with every bottle and glass that they showed in this movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I missed a good chunk of act two and three. But oh, you guys sure. will walk me through it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you sure that one of these ladies wasn't your like great aunt or something? <laughs> that is very possible. It's right. me, Mrs. Enright. <laughs> but she thinks she knows why the baby hates her. It's mm. time for her to call a doodly do. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's like, remember my backstory? It was the hunchback of Notre Dame. I was in gypsy face and I didn't have a goat, though. <laughs> what was happening there? I think it, I think it might have actually been like a pirate themed burlesque hunchback of Notre Dame. Right. Yeah. Like, something that, like I can't that. describe it any other way. She's dressed up as a Romani, including a tan, which is not fun. <laughs> yep. Justin Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the the uh, little person is is chasing her around. So this this was her old stripper act. So just to be clear, her old act as a stripper was to dress up as the Romani person from the Hunchback of Notre Dame and make fun of a little person. Yeah. Just <sighs> dance around a guy with dwarfism yeah. in a circle. This yep. is the comedy that Dave Chappelle wants to bring us back to, and you <laughs> oh, SJWs no. won't let him. <laughs> okay, but I'm just saying, sometimes little people are also, you know, evil magic sexual predators. Like, that's <laughs> it's, it's not like they're none of them are. It's actually woke, if you think about yeah, it. It's, just like, <laughs> it's more bigoted that you won't. I'm casting you. the best actor. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Like, little people never get to be the bad guy on SVU, and that's not fair. <laughs> so they go back to her dressing room, and he starts touching her inappropriately. Like, it, she she acts as like, oh, if if he hadn't been such a stupid, wretched dwarf monstrosity, I would have known he wanted to rape me like a normal people. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's very upsetting. It's very and upsetting. And to be clear, we hadn't clarified that he is, in fact, a sexual predator. So yes. my comment makes more, more sense now. <laughs> Circling back. Also, we should point out that, like, as this this little person is like molesting her and trying to seduce her, she is looking directly into camera with a facial expression that reads, "Do I want to fuck a dwarf? Nah, nah I don't want to fuck a dwarf." <laughs> so she fights him off, and he's sad and leaves the dressing room. And then Tommy, her boss, comes in and he's <laughs> like, "Hey." If you think about it, it's kind of funny that the dwarf tried to have sex with you. Would you like to have sex with me now? And the answer <laughs> is yes. They immediately have sex. Uh, yeah. And she literally, she's like walking home. She's like, loo, 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 done having sex after fighting off a dwarf. <laughs> and the dwarf pop scares her. Pop scares out and goes, you're going to have a demon baby. <laughs> yeah. You know what's fun? Assigning evil magical traits to dwarfism. <laughs> so fun. Right. And I just want to assure all of our audiences at home um, that curse does not work. Believe me, I've tried it. And uh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Just... So they go back to her drinking more scotch. Another barrel. Yep. <laughs> and this is where we see her um, feeding the baby through a, a glass bottle. So apparently 1970 to 1989. They just, you know, fed your baby out of a snow globe. Oh, yeah. Is that? I mean, 
they don't do that now, right? You said like glass. They realized glass wasn't the best idea. Since yeah. Probably not the best point. thing. Generally, yeah. glass is not the best thing to put around a child that can drop things. Yeah, true. Well, yeah, any child, but especially a demon one that wants <laughs> to kill you, because this one, like, they're they're downstairs and they hear glass break, and they're like, oh, it's just the baby like crying and dropping the of things. scotch or yep. milk or whatever the fuck we gave it. I don't know. <laughs> And they go upstairs and the baby's like brandishing a half broken bottle and fighting a bouncer. <laughs> well, she says he spat at me because like, yeah, he's a baby. Babies yes. spit. <laughs> well, see, I think what they meant was like a two, which again is the first of many times I thought to myself, why did we not get to see that scene? <laughs> there are so many moments where I want to watch this baby do the things that this movie portrays the baby having done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, so so far, the evil things this baby has done is scratch, cry, and spit up, which actually are very normal things for babies to do. They have little fingernails, and you're supposed to put like mittens on them so that they don't scratch things, including themselves, because that's usually what they have around. So like they do have claws. They they have fingernails. Claws, <laughs> got it. Hey bud, got it. You, uh, fingernails. You can scratch Keith, things with fingernails. Keith heard claws. He gets it. <laughs> All right, cool. And this is the first time that Nun's sister sees the baby, and she starts to pray at him, and he sizzles. And I just want to point out that that is the first <laughs> actually concerning thing that happens with this baby in the movie, and no one addresses it. She's just like, oh yeah, they must have gotten one of those frying pan cribs. All right, Lou, 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 I'm a nun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get it, baby. I have the same reaction to unsolicited praying. What? Yeah. No, get it away. Creepy. Yeah. <laughs> so now we cut to the baby's baptism. And look, this movie's about a demon baby, and the least realistic thing in it is a Catholic church in England that's this full. I just want to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little upsetting, too. We We get there, and the first thing that happens is a Fucking Nambla polycule walks up to <laughs> altar boys and priests. Yeah. yeah, I wrote in my notes, John Malkovich is here, everybody, and he brought two boys in dresses. If I had a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they hand baby to priest and baby starts crying and everybody's freaked out because baby's crying at a, like being held by a stranger. And I just wanted them to do like literally anything that would make them actually freak out like that. Like baby tries to bite the priest and like take its Bible and run away or... Something. <laughs> well, doesn't the baby like kind of try to steal the Bible at the end of this? Oh, does he actually? <laughs> yeah, oh. I was unclear what this scene is supposed to be, but I think it's a tug of war with the baby and the priest over the Bible. <laughs> I, want, yeah. I want baby to like grab the Bible out of his hands, flip everybody the bird and just run off. <laughs> That's kind of what they were saying was happening. I feel like like yeah. I get like it's a weird low level thing for Satan to be doing. This is supposed to be like <laughs> Satan or the spawn of Satan. And he's just like, boo, King James is a stupid translation. And it just like runs away. He does little <laughs> things. He'll ramp it up, though. Yep. One other moment in this scene, um, they, they cut over to the nun sister with the doctor for a second. And she's like, so. Just wanted to ask you a quick question. I, I blessed the baby and it kind of lit on fire. Is that normal? And the doctor's like, ah, it's fine. I'm sure it's not a problem. And then she's like, well, just so you know, I'm a nun slash medical researcher. So <laughs> I'll be helpful throughout this movie. You know, you all the me. nuns that are on the <laughs> forefront of science and technology. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, like, what? I, I was so confused as to what medical research would look like. She like she's just like swirling a beaker for no reason and then and praying at a tumor. But we actually get to see almost what I just said as a joke. Yep. That will be Did later in the movie. Inject people with holy water. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, they mentioned something like that. Yeah. I inject about a rat, something maybe? about a, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Right. But the the baby <laughs> does put the priest in a triangle lock. So now we're gonna cut over to the doctor's <laughs> office. And again, <laughs> Actually, scary thing in this movie, we see the baby just lying on a table, no railings, no <laughs> nothing, just hanging out in an open space. Yeah, <laughs> unsafe. And the doctor's just dismissing all their worries. He's like, yep. oh, I mean, it could have been epilepsy. It could have been autism, but we haven't caused that with vaccinations yet. So don't worry about it. That's a few <laughs> yeah, years away. Baby could be autistic or epileptic from not wanting to be dipped in water by a weird looking priest. That's insane. <laughs> There's also this great moment where the mom is like, could it 
have something to do with how big he is, doctor. I'm just <laughs> worried. And, and the doctor's like, you know that people don't grow at a constant rate of acceleration, <laughs> right? She's like, because the baby will be 200 feet tall next year. And he's like, no, that's not how... No. It's not how it Doctor, works. my baby cries and spits and scratches and doesn't know how to read. What do I do? <laughs> okay, but, you know, you're focusing on these little things. The demon behavior, I want to I wanna zero in on that. You mentioned some demon behavior, <laughs> but uh, they will not. Yes, he cries, Doctor. He cries. <laughs> oh, that's what you meant? You meant crying? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll check again for autism, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe try this bleach enema for now, but I, we, it's hard to check for autism. We'll give it ketamine. He's, he actually says that. He's like, we'll just sedate the baby constantly until we figure this out with very strong 70s drugs. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I just want to find out if there was any trauma during the birth. Uh, the doctor says that who was there at the birth. <laughs> Maybe I turned away and someone gave the baby a finger. I don't know. I'm trying to figure <laughs> it out. Did I angle my forceps or like javelin weird? I don't know. It could have been me. Was, was she was awake it. when I slapped her belly as hard as I could? <laughs> I never should have elbow dropped the baby to get it to cry. <laughs> uh, and then the blood tests are back and they're normal because in the 1970s, blood tests were just giving it to a guy to drink and he would see if it tasted funny. I don't know. They, they took this baby's blood at the beginning of the scene. Six sentences later, they were like, he's fine. And, and this is where the doctor takes the husband aside and he's like, uh, I don't know how to put this. Any chance your wife is a crazy woman. And he's like, yes, there is a <laughs> yeah, big yeah, yeah. chance that she's just a crazy woman. Yeah, that's a big one. Lucy, could you leave the room so we can keep talking about this? <laughs> yeah. Do you take, and this is where the husband asks if they take returns? He just wants to know if the baby can like live at the hospital for a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's like your shitty friend from college. Hey man, you mind if my baby crashes for a little while? I just, we got a lot going on right now. Uh but he's like, nope, get a babysitter. That's my prescription. Pulls a little crib out of a couch. Really? You do? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hmm. So we cut to them meeting the babysitter. And she's an old timey nurse. And we could tell because she wears scrubs to babysit. <laughs> yeah. They're like, here are the towels. Here are the sedatives. Here's the straight jacket. And this is a can of mace, just in case. <laughs> you know. Here's your bear mace, just in case the baby acts up. Right. And there's this insane moment that happens. It's just a small moment, but the, she goes in to check on the baby. The baby's asleep. The nurse goes in to check on the baby, opens the door, walks in. The baby starts crying and she's like, go to sleep. And I wanted the baby to be like, bitch, you came in here and woke me up. I was in here asleep. I really wanted this to turn into like a Mary Poppins and the demon baby type story here. Oh, but it does not. buddy movie. That just him. Great. Lighting the cartoon penguins on fire with his mind. I'd watch it. Yeah, I'd watch totally. it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is a chance for Gino and main character mom to finally have a night on the town and their third drink in 26 minutes of screen time. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, she tries to bring up her past to, the, to Gino here. And she's like, yeah, Gino, I just want you to know that my past. And he's like, no, 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 Lucy. I know the child might be half stripper. I get it. But the past, but if he is, we will be there in the front row showering our sweet little angel with as many dollar bills as we can carry. <laughs> yeah, he says, what did we say? And I want her to be like, leave our dwarf curses behind. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for more bad parking. They're back from their dinner date and they will literally park on the curb this time. What yeah. do you think the word parallel means? That's a word <laughs> in the UK, too. God damn it. Well, oh. considering how much alcohol they actually had over dinner that we saw them drink over dinner, it makes kind of sense. That, I'm just surprised he didn't, like, drive into the house, up the stairs and into the house. <laughs> Is parallel different in metric or something? <laughs> what <laughs> angle do they think it? Oh, God. Yeah, but they, they come in, they have their fourth drink, and then they go upstairs to find the baby trying to drown the nurse. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> and the nurse tries to defend the baby, kind of, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. They're like, what the fuck are you doing with your face in the tub? Why are you even <laughs> bathing the baby at this hour? And she's like, Duh, no, it was just Marco Polo. We were playing. <laughs> we Marco were play Polo. He caught me cheating and opened we were my eyes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I deserve this. We were we were bobbing for apples and it got weird. I'm just going to say that. It's fine. <laughs> but, 
But her actual explanation for why she's bathing the baby at midnight is that, like, he messed his diaper up. Yeah. And, like, in my head in the 1970s, just every time a baby shat itself, you gave it a bath. <laughs> well, the mom is like, oh, my God, he poops too now? How many more evil symptoms am I going to have to deal with? <laughs> And this is the first time, but not the last, that mom will look at the baby and it will switch out for the little person's face. Oh, it becomes God. baby dwarf. And when I wrote baby dwarf in my notes, I wrote sung to the tune of baby shark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would have made more baby. sense than the soundtrack at yeah. this point and throughout the movie. Yeah, yep. definitely. That would have been delightful now that I think about it. It should have like a musical number at this point. Yeah. <laughs> this this would have been a great musical. Actually. <laughs> that could have fixed it. Oh my god! Billionaire money. We might rewrite this as a musical. Oh, Beautiful. the devil inside her. The musical. Yes, yep. we we have the talent and we have the technology. <laughs> so now it's time for the baby to go on a walk with the nanny. Yep. Because apparently in the 1970s, parents saw their kids about twice a year. <laughs> And I was very upset the baby is not going to Tokyo drift his carriage and kill the nanny in this scene. So, no, you know, no. get ready to get disappointed. Uh, also, by the way, small detail. We're out front of their apartment here and their address is number 32, which is scary, right? Is, is it? I think, right? 32 is an evil number. It's like Jesus died in the year 32 or close to it. And he was like, I thought maybe 32, 23 32. was like, there was a horror movie about the number. And that's the reverse of 23 with Jim Carrey. There you go. Okay. Good that was sure. that was a terrible movie. That <laughs> it was O.J. Simpson's number in football. Number 32. Okay. Also. All, right. All, right. All right. I I am almost 32. So teeth and right teeth cuts. <laughs> there we go. I, I am 32. 32. Well, was that, that was that an echo? <laughs> I mean, that? to be you, fair, you're 38. You, Come on. You were 32 first so. <laughs> <laughs> by a while. All right. So it's she's talking to her sister again. And yep. gossip and drinking sesh. It's fun. Yep. Her fifth alcoholic beverage of the movie. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure out how to break it to Gino and the doctor that he's possessed by the devil. But what they land on is that she should go talk to her old stripper boss because, you know, he might have like a demon uncle or something. Yeah, because what they reveal is that it might actually be Tommy's baby. Yeah. Tommy is the stripper boss's name. Yeah. But but at this point, it seems like they're saying, you know, perhaps a little person <laughs> transferred his evil DNA into you. You should get this checked out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like the doctor's going to read a print off from a dot matrix printer and be like, ah, there it is. Dwarf curse. Dwarf curse right there. Yep. Yeah. See, you, you let him touch you for five <laughs> seconds, at least. Now we know. I thought she was like, her sister was like, so wait, you're, you're going to ask Tommy if by any chance anybody in his family was ever a baby? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they'll have that conversation later. Yep. 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 <laughs> and now it's time for another murder. So uh, they're oh. walking through the park. Uh, we see not one, but two golden retrievers. Oh, my uh, God. I couldn't this deal. This old lady mm. who talks incessantly nonstop to her golden retrievers is me in 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> and the nanny, totally her own fault here, perches the carriage an inch and a half from the edge of a body of water. And then is just like, all right, I think I'll just look over the ledge here. And baby pushes her in the water and she hits her head on a rock and dies. Yep. Yeah, but they play it like he pushed her off a cliff into the the pond that was lapping at her feet <laughs> at the time. And then like her body's gas tank explodes. It's it's yeah. over the top of the, the killing here. Right. And the old lady with the dog finds her and, and it's just a tiny moment. But for some reason, they did not use this woman's scream. They used the same sound effect scream from the beginning. <laughs> like, like this actress, yeah. they were like, and now you see the dead woman and you scream. And she was like, ah. yeah. <laughs> the they were like, it's OK, we'll we'll fix it in post. <laughs> also, they do a pop scare here, but it was the baby's hand, which is the most adorable <laughs> pop scare ever. She's just like standing by a pond. And then it was like, bam, 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 baby hand. Huh. Yeah. Not as terrifying as the people who made this movie were hoping. <laughs> yep. So the cops come and they're like, yep, looks like an accident to me. Looks like an accident to me. All right, let's go find this baby's owner. I mean, parents, whatever. 
wait, let's ask some questions. Hey, baby, did you see what happened? <laughs> baby's like, I ain't saying a word. <clears throat> Wah, not yep. a demon. <laughs> Babe's just, baby just stares straight at them, dabs, and goes back under his covers again. <laughs> <laughs> so now we, we cut to the doctor. He's just finished visiting Lucy. Lucy is the mom's name, by the way. I've been calling her main character, but her name is Lucy. And he gave her two pills. You know, just two pills. <laughs> Of medicine, <laughs> medicine pills. Yep. Yep. And and uh, Nun Sister just walks into the movie like it's not weird or anything. And she's having this little talk with dad at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. And literally, I've noticed this nurse, this, sorry, I keep on calling her nurse. This, this nun never moves a single facial muscle this entire time. She looks like, <laughs> nope. She looks like a Mel Brooks bad guy <laughs> in like an entirely unsubtle way. Yeah, well, she's she's wearing the the what what the habit the vestments whatever they call it, and it's tied down so tight like it around is. her face with like a strappy so thing. tight her eyes are literally bulging out like Eli's it's getting joke pushed. like yeah see how wide my eyes are right now this is how okay I am with this moment <laughs> <Right>. yeah <laughs> and we should probably talk about her accent during this scene we should definitely talk about this accent. Okay. her accents multiple plural yep. six of them <laughs> yeah so. Her, let's 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 be fair. In scene one, she does British person doing an Italian accent as best they can. I heard your I heard her roll some R's in there. I feel like that's yeah. it's okay. Sure. In this scene, she goes full Dracula. She gets a communist accent at yeah. one point. <laughs> she she keeps on saying, "Oh, the baby might be possessed by the devil." Like she thinks it's she just the like devil. devil. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She gets back to Italian one. for the word day, <laughs> yeah. but otherwise it's all over. The it's like <laughs> Eli does this to me on purpose. He'll write up a little skit and be like, Heath, do a Tasmanian accent here. And I try <laughs> to do it for a second. And then I'm just like, God, can we just, no, we'd cut. And, but they didn't cut any of Heath not knowing how to do accents. They just had her go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But the gist of this scene is Gino is talking to his sister and he's like, okay, I get it. You and my wife think the baby's possessed. You want me to turn my baby over to the cops? And she's like, yes. Ye no, well, actually, actually, she's like, why don't you bring it to the hospital for observation to see if, the, you know, the doctors who do science can spot any signs of possession, of <laughs> demon possession. Right. And while you do that, you and your <laughs> wife take a long trip out of the country together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, she that's acts a little bit like an evil person, too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just to prove this is a Christian movie, I mean, not that you didn't know it already, but she does ask him when the last time he prayed was, so this movie counts, Christian movie. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Yep. They seem very confused as to what the fuck you would pray for in that scenario, though. <laughs> They're like, all right, pray, I guess. No, good point. Um, For no more murdering by the baby or the baby <laughs> the baby's not satan in the first place or no make it smaller it's just if it's smaller it's fine we'll pray for smaller got it yeah got it we'll we settle on smaller settle, settle small we're going to small ask small ask <laughs> room to negotiate so now we cut to the next day or later at some point and the gardener is holding a dead mouse up to the nanny and being like, is this your dead mouse? You gonna eat this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had no idea who these people were, but apparently this is like a new nanny, Did they, right? Didn't they well, switch nannies? This is the one from the beginning. Oh, is it? That I thought was originally the nanny. This is just, I guess, the lady who helps out around the house. This is their servant. This is their indentured servant. Okay. Yeah. These people have 47 servants, yes. none of whom will ever be given names, no. and most of whom will die. Yes. Yeah. And this guy is a bellhop. He's dressed like a bellhop. I don't yep. know what he's doing. He's dressed like an elevator operator. <laughs> yeah. And he's handing her dead mice out of her septic tank. <laughs> yep. And she's like, yeah, um, okay. You found a, a mouse in the, the patio fuck dungeon that we apparently have. Um, <laughs> throw it in the garbage and they open up the garbage and there are 45 bottles of champagne in there. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> This game is fun, but diff I'm going back to the liquor store. Now I got to get Cointreau because they drank some Cointreau on the rocks. I'm behind on that one. That's a weird one. <laughs> and 45 bottles of champagne. And they pan over to Baby, and Baby is so upset that they threw away his dead mouse. He's like, I was saving that for later. <laughs> yeah. God, well, God. What we learn is that the baby puts the mouse in her tea. Like, as How? a prank. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Again, Satan's doing like low-level pranks at this point. It's just a weird vision for the Prince of Darkness. I don't understand. He's just like, ah, put their keys inside Jello. Classic. I was like, classic Jim hell Halpert. yeah, this baby has pranks. I just wanted the baby in the background as she would discover the master T to just get up and start doing pump it up as fast as he could. <laughs> <laughs> With that perfect deadpan. We definitely needed more trash talk from the baby. Yeah. 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 Victory dances. The baby was awesome. Baby could have right. a prank show, like on YouTube or something. <laughs> so with that complete, Lucy heads back to the strip club to see if Tommy has a history of babyism in his family. <laughs> we, we, we see Hercules, the dwarf who cursed her in the first place, walking out of the club here. And I'm going to say it because I'm brave. Hercules is fucking thick. That's right. Yeah. I'm brave enough to say it. Hercules can mm. put it down. Eli wrote that with down. six C's, everybody. Six C's, yeah. absolutely. Yep. But yeah, he's watching <laughs> stripper auditions, but she walks in and he starts ignoring them. Yes. Yeah. When they show Hercules, so far the music in this whole movie has been like smooth jazz and like porn soundtrack stuff, which is strange for a horror movie, but whatever. And as soon as they show Hercules leaving the club and walking around, they have like legit someone just doing the mouth harp. It's like doing, 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 <laughs> doing, do. doing, doing. I was surprised they didn't have like someone following him with a tuba the entire time. Because this movie is like crazy degrading to people with dwarfism. Yep. They're like, is this comic relief or is it terrifying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a harp, but much smaller. The Foley guy was just like, I'm using my fucking mouth harp. I have it on the table. I'm using it. <laughs> Yeah. But then they, yeah, they they go into the. She goes into the strip club and they're doing the auditions. And one other note on the music: <laughs> the first stripper comes out to audition for Tommy, and she starts dancing like thirty seconds ahead of the music coming out, <laughs> which needs to be a thing. Strip clubs with no music, it's weird and terrifying, but amazing because we got yes. to see a little bit yeah. of this. And I was like, all right, I would go to strip clubs maybe because that's funny. Hear me out on this. Strip clubs with book on tape. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that would Just be good. Some girl taking her top off to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> that okay. place is I packed. Have... That'd be Different great. book in my head. That's good. We'll write that down too, though. Becoming by Michelle Obama. <laughs> That's what, That was what I had in my head. Thank you. Good. Okay, we got them both. Good. Ah, oh, 70s stripping too. Because like this lady is just miming doing a boomerang in the shower. Yep. <laughs> Like there is no, there's no like bump and grind situation. It's just like waggle my hips around and touch my boobs. Wait, like throwing a boomerang inside no, of a no, shower? No, no, no. Like, like, oh, sorry, not boomerang. I'm thinking looped. <laughs> Hula hoop. There we go. Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> a I was boomerang. so confused. I was, I got this amazing image in my head and I was like, I'm going to bring a boomerang in the shower now because that sounds crazy fun. Get one of those little miniature ones made of oh. cardboard. <laughs> yeah, those little plastic. Yes, the Buma ones. Absolutely. Yeah, get them to go around the spray and see if I can get how many loops I can get. <laughs> I'm also going to hula hoop in the shower now, too, though. I think both are great ideas. Yeah, right hula hoop and boomerang. It. We'll just yeah, bring all the outdoor to lawn darts next into the Listeners shower. at home, <laughs> it's very important you know that next time Heath takes a shower, he's going to bring one of those indoor boomerangs in and disappoint <laughs> himself when he gets a paper cut on his penis. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do under the leg. You guys got to do Skeptocrat without me this week. Tell everyone I'm on vacation I wear a bathing again. suit in the shower sometimes. I'll be fine. <laughs> also, one other thing on this scene. We get one more stripper audition here. And she comes in and Tommy is talking to Lucy like at the table. And he's he's like taking notes at first. I don't know what the fuck notes you would write down. <laughs> for Breasts like two. <laughs> two. Got it. Check, check. Like, I yeah. So he's doing something like that. And then he starts talking to her and... The stripper's mad about this, as she should be. She's just like, watch me fucking stripping. What are you doing? And she, like, dance strips her way into the conversation. She, like, <laughs> over and gets in the way. I very much enjoyed her, like, obtrusive, pay attention to me stripping. At one point, she smacks her bra on the table in front of them. <laughs> This is what we need. We got book on tape strippers. Now we've got intrusive strippers. Like not for a bachelor party, but you could hire them for meetings where they just walk and everyone's all right. So in the third quarter, excuse me. Bah, 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 bah. Get, get in your opponent's head. I get it. So now it's time for the nun 
to talk with the doctor in his office about how much he knows about devil baby itis. <laughs> oh, and more of her bragging about how she's going to be very useful because she's a, a, a nun. nun veterinary <laughs> medicine combo expert. So she's just like, yeah, I understand you specialize in just regular non-demon babies. Perhaps I can help you doctor this demon baby. Yeah. yeah. She actually says, as an impartial observer, that baby is possessed. One of the doctors <laughs> would be like, all right, I feel like there's a little bias when you invoke literal magic. It's fine. It's fine. It's the 1970s. Sure. Did you guys pick up on the legit chemistry here? Oh, absolutely. Like he he mm. actually literally says to her, you're not like other nuns, are you? Like, <laughs> I want I wanted them to just fuck on the table. Oh, it got so hard. It, it got <laughs> the tension in the room got so hard. Anna became erect. At I this became point. I had a huge boner at this point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other thing that the nun asks here, which was interesting, she says, Hey, um, in your doctoring experience, do babies ever decide to just, you know, stay inside? <laughs> just set up and, house. <laughs> yeah. And the doctor's like, interesting. I could swear that sounds familiar because <laughs> I think I said that in the first scene. Yeah. Uh, he said crazy. the original title of the movie. Which is the title of the British yeah. version of the original <laughs> movie. Yeah, exactly. It's at that point I wrote in my notes, if this movie ends with them shoving the baby back inside Lucy, I am 100% in. <laughs> you heard the kid. If that's the big climax instead of an exorcism, that, that would have been interesting. And he's just like grabbing the sides of, of her cervix like a cat trying to put, you put it in the carrier and it won't go. Yeah, it's going all limp. Come on. Don't. Come on, put some treats inside her. Maybe he'll crawl in himself. <laughs> Just stuffing her in there like shoving like a sleeping bag back into it. You got to you got to leave it open for like three weeks and they just learn to go in and out as they like <laughs> and then they go in. So they're saying their goodbyes. And by the way, the quippiest, most sexually charged goodbyes of all. Uh, he's like, oh, you're you know, you would have made a good doctor. And she's like, you would have made a terrible nun. And then they leave. But I just wanted to like them to switch to like a getting to know you montage of them being at the hospital with the baby under observation. And she wants to read him <laughs> to him out of the Bible for bedtime stories. And he wants to read out of Grey's Anatomy. And then they the possessed baby starts vomiting blood and the doctor is trying to do all the get a stethoscope to it. And she's throwing holy water on it. And they look at each other like, oh, you <laughs> and the baby dabs again and burns the hospital to the ground. I thought it would be great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 100% they missed their chance for a sitcom here. And, and when she says that thing about you'd be a bad nun, I wanted the doctor to get really mad. Like, you don't know that. I would have been a baller nun. <laughs> Puts on the hat. See? Look at this shit. Yep. Recreational. But I think the point is that they could switch jobs and one would have literally no effect. One of those switches not mattering at all. The movie's not aware of that. That is what the movie They're thinks. They're like, Veterinary nun, doctor, even all the expertise. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, now it's been established that nuns and doctors are equally qualified to deal with demon babies, which is true. They are equally <laughs> qualified fair. for that. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give act three the hard sell. Will Heath survive the movie drinking game that he's been preparing his whole life for? Doesn't matter. It's a win-win scenario. So either way, stay tuned for the height supremacist conclusion of The Devil Within Her. <laughs> All right, everybody. Scene 31 and action. But doctor, surely you don't believe in the devil. Oh, cut, cut. No, um, Regina, you're from Italy. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm from Manchester. I'm Michael Marshall's mom. Okay, mean. Feels mean. Uh, oh, Eli wrote it. Oh, I, I had no doubt. No, but I, I mean, your character is from Italy. You have to sound like that. Oh, got it, got it. Hey, but doctor, surely you believe in the devil? No, no, okay. What do you, don't do that. Try again differently. Hey, but doctor, surely you believe in the devil? Okay, we'll say closer, 
I guess. But just oh, one more okay. time. All right. But doctor, surely you believe in the devil. Yeah, okay, close enough. Keep rolling. Is there any more cocaine? It is 1974, so yes, um, a bunch. Ah. Just stick your face out. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Is that a nose joke? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, Lucy and Gino had come to the realization that their baby was a literal demon. And, you know, that's exhausting. It's just <laughs> late night wake ups, demonic murdering stuff. So it's time for them to plan a nice getaway to Rome without their baby. Yep. Yeah, let's, you know what? My wife has so many silly notions about our child being possessed by the devil. So let's just take her to the one place they actually believe people get to be possessed <laughs> yeah, by the devil. Right. <laughs> take her to Demon Central. <laughs> the Vatican in the 70s, we're about to shoot a guy for saying condoms might not be bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get a quick cut to Sister Nun at her church slash science lab. Yep. Yes. Just doing some nun science with... just. Rats, yeah. lab rats all in the cages. I don't know what that would be. And this rat is not happy to be in this movie. He's like, let go of me, let go of me. <laughs> yeah, I was convinced that she was actually going to pick that rat up and just stuff it directly in her mouth as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah. The deadpan on this woman's face is just ugh, eerie. Right, so they're in the lab of church and mice and the, the the veterinary nun is like i gotta figure out this demon baby let me look at my <laughs> wall of books that might be useful and she's like okay praying for rats not that mm. one is it, is it under <laughs> d Praise or anatomy? b no. how to inject holy water no. yeah. <laughs> okay. but then she's like the encyclopedia of demon babies <laughs> of course, go. it was under yeah. e for encyclopedias the whole time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to rearrange these. <laughs> and then another nun walks in to like reinforce just how much science is happening. And the other nun is like, hey, how's it going with those microscopes that you really need to use and your magic research? And the sister nun is like, yeah, no, it's going great. But she's she's using a microscope. What the fuck would she be doing with a microscope there? <laughs> she's trying to find the Hellraiser Dean. Hey, excuse this church for taking it seriously when they say they're looking for Jesus. <laughs> She's got the head of a pin under there counting angels. Oh, it's look at that. 24. Uh, I told you, Barbara. <laughs> you fat cunt. Yeah. And, <laughs> I don't know why she's so aggressive with Barbara. I have no idea why I said that. It was unkind. <laughs> There's one other sciencey line that they throw in here, and they get it so badly wrong. It's the best. Sister, what's Sister Nun's name? Albana? Is that her yeah. name? Yeah. I White, call her Albania. White lady? Yeah. Albino. Yeah. She's like, so, uh, other science nun, I injected the variable into the rat. And the other nun's like, great, we can use him as a control now. <laughs> I was so happy about this. They they just like variable control, nailed it. We used once each. Yeah, Got it is it. Science. truly science word, science word, the mad lib. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we cut over to Lucy and Tommy having a lunch by by the pool because nothing makes lunch go down smoother than the smell of chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. And the drinks got bigger again. Yep. Yeah. I was like, I was trying to play along still, and I was just like, fuck. The whiskey's literally in a pint glass. Like we joked about it. Now it's, there's a pint <laughs> yep. of whiskey. It's like, and there's a beer. It's like one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer, but the bourbon and the scotch are in one glass together, filling a pint. It was scary. And the waiter is currently coming over to bring them more. And they each have like three cigarettes in their mouth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And a large <laughs> pile of bologna sandwiches on a plate next mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. Just a pile of blow. Your typical you Roman say. hotel lunch or wherever they are. <laughs> and they're not the only people eating poolside too, which is, I think, maybe the weirdest part. Yeah, it's a very strange scene. And we should point out that, like, this scene is supposed to be Lucy breaking to Tommy that the kid might be hers. But Tommy is 
medically incapable of responding in anything but zingers. So she's like, <laughs> Tommy, I have something to tell you. And he's like, oh, and do you have something to show me? And she's like, no, Tommy, this is serious. Serious as a heart attack. And she's like, you're the child of my father. And he's like, uh, knock, knock, who's there? <laughs> Jumps into the pool and swims away. You said it backwards. You said child of father, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, basically she's like, all right, so uh, we're going to have to check if the demon came from you. And are you a demon? We're going to have to check if you're a demon. Yeah, to which he gets really upset and she slaps him and runs off. And he eventually follows her. I'm surprised that he didn't like sit there and try to like guzzle down as many scotches as he could before he left just so they wouldn't go to waste. Just gets it into like a 7-Eleven to go cup. <laughs> comes, out, <laughs> comes out with a straw. Not wasting good scotch. <laughs> no, I think basically he was just helping me out. He like looked at the camera and was like, there you go, Heath. There's a free one for you. You're probably having some trouble with this. Even you. How many yeah. of me are you seeing right now? Right, but he he chases her out to the parking lot and he's like, fine, I'll meet your baby and I'll fight it too. <laughs> yeah, get in the car. And this is supposed to be a sports car, like a fancy one and it's supposed to look all cool and whatever and drive off real fast. But it is the size of like a a tinker toy. Yeah, it's it doesn't it's help. adorable. <laughs> it doesn't help that you can see their feet sticking out under the car like the Flintstones as they drive. Exactly. <laughs> so, so they get to the house and Tommy, who has been a part of the movie, is like, so we, we fuck now? Oh, yeah. That was a weird moment. He's like, cool, Um, should we fuck? Or, you know, should we see if I fathered a demon first? Which... <laughs> I feel, I feel like we could sort first of, to warm it up. I yeah, I feel like we could celebrate me not fathering the demon afterwards by fucking. But then this, it'll kind of ruin it if I did. I, what do you think? And she's like, let's go see the demon. Do you want to fuck in front of the baby at the same time? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, they go up and see the baby and the baby punches him in the face. I love this baby. I just wanted it to pan over to the baby flossing as fast as he could, just looking directly <laughs> into the camera like, what, what? And then like a thing comes in and go, baby trapped. You've been baby trapped. <laughs> Fucking love Baby's this baby. Baby's just like filling up the floor with a little pond. Hey, what are you doing over there? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're uh, dead. Come check this out. But no, Tommy, Tommy gets punched by a baby and has... <laughs> The only natural horror movie reaction a person should have. He's like, yep, I'm out of here. And Tommy <laughs> lives happily ever after. He will never be in this movie again. Oh, so good. Yeah. And he got to miss, which is nice for him. He got to miss the very long montage that we get now of Gino doing errands in London. Yeah, this scene was originally a pitch for a British reboot of That Girl starring Gino. <laughs> uh, for younger listeners, That Girl was New Girl when wearing pants qualified you as kooky. Just uh, you can <laughs> follow along with the jokes here. They should have had a hat trying on car, like montage. Yes. <laughs> That's one point. But mostly he was just buying large bags of liquor again yeah. for my game. So, so he comes home and he's like, look, I bought all these bags of liquor. Put this champagne on ice. And he <laughs> slaps her ass. And no, he throws all like the it's comic how much stuff he has with him, the bags and boxes. And he just throws it all on her and says, all right, you get this already. We're going to have a great time tonight. Lucy, I brought you a surprise. And she just kind of like stumbles into the I just wanted to see her try to put them all down like holding one underneath her neck. She's got them underneath her. She's balancing two on her head. And she tries to open the door to get in the next room. There must be a better way. <laughs> She's following them around like a cartoon butler. But here's the best part. So they have this, right? This is all leading up to a sex scene, right? And the only thing I want to point out, like this movie is such a weird combination of look at Joan's boobs and scary baby. So they have this sex scene, but there's this great moment where she goes, First naked one in the bed wins. And I was just picturing Heath like stiff arming her out a window. Like, I win. See? <laughs> nailed it. I would have ah, won. Second place. I would have nailed it. Why are you crying? <laughs> Take out the scoreboard. We're putting that up. This counts. This putting counts. that up. This absolutely counts. Where's the chalk? <laughs> yeah. And I want it <laughs> so badly because it's it's supposed to be one of those like 1970s artsy sex scenes, which just means 
don't show penetration and you won't be X-rated. And I, mm -hmm. the camera pans in sort of this like artistic way, but I thought it was just going to like pan over to the baby watching from the window <laughs> or sitting in the corner, just like shaking his head with his arms crossed. <laughs> they do that scene of like the feet messing around. And I just wanted there to be like another pair of feet that slides in. And then maybe the little baby's feet also join them. Start kicking around down there. So it's post-sex and Gino is, I was really excited. So for years, I have said that the movie that will win my heart and affection forever is the post-sex scene where someone goes and washes off their dick. I thought he was going to do it. He does not, sadly. And there's no wet washcloth scene in a movie today. We've made it 2019 years. No wet washcloth scenes yet. How many years do you think there have been? 2019. Got it. Okay. Got it. All right. Fun. It's what year it is. Super oh. young Earth ah. creationist. <laughs> <laughs> the youngest Earth creationist. <laughs> but yeah, he's walking around and he goes to check on the baby. And it appears that the baby has jumped out the window. <laughs> Pulled an Eric, the an window? Eric Clapton fake out, though, is yeah. what's actually <laughs> happened. Yeah, baby hulked out. After drinking a set, all of his sedative. Did you notice that? That the, the sedative bottle is on the ground half empty? Yeah, the baby like chugged the sedative, which Keith, I hope you included in your drinking game. Otherwise, you cheated. <laughs> I did. Okay, good. Baby's hooked on opium now. And then faked <laughs> jumping out the window so that his dad would go into the backyard and look for what I assume is his baby's mangled corpse. <laughs> yep. I'll be honest, though, I didn't drink sedative. Mm. It looked it was like pink liquid. It looked like I, I drank some of that bubblegum medicine, some amoxicillin. <laughs> I guess it still counts. Look, you kept up. You drank something out of a medical bottle. That's fair. Okay. Do you need your stomach pumped now? Not anymore. Yes, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so, yeah, he goes outside. He's looking for the baby. And this is where they introduce the baby's evil laugh. The baby, <laughs> the baby has a laugh. Like a Warner Brothers cartoon dog. It literally. <laughs> <laughs> like Muttley, yeah. It's like the baby's hanging out with his friends waiting to do a surprise party. You know, just yeah. being like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> shut up. You're murder this guy. But baby has baby trapped, because I'm not going to say booby trapped, baby trapped the backyard. <laughs> Get it? Pun. All right. Baby trapped. Uh, <laughs> with a lasso. I guess the old you lasso your dad with a noose trick kind yep. of thing. He's up in a tree. I wanted it to pan up to the tree and the baby's doing ride the pony. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but just to be clear, this baby now hangs his father with a noose and dumps him in the septic tank. Now, my friends, before you get too excited, we do not get to see the baby doing the rope work on this. But I will pay any amount of money to remake this movie <laughs> where we could see the baby doing all of these murders. <laughs> and then baby baby hangs the dad, dumps him in the septic tank, covers it back up again. And then the baby turns out the lights, you know, for politeness <laughs> sake. So now it's the next morning and Lucy wakes up and Gino isn't there. Yeah, she, she runs around the house yelling Gino. And when she can't hear him, she goes into the baby's room as is to ask the baby, hey, have you seen him? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen your dad anywhere? And, but of course, she doesn't find him there. And when you can't <laughs> and when your husband disappears, you call his nun sister for an exorcism. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That is what you do. <laughs> so she calls the nun sister to come over and exercise the baby. Then she calls her sister, who it turns out is sleeping with Tommy which means that Tommy's plot in this movie is to get punched in the face by a demon baby and then immediately went over to fuck this woman's <laughs> sister. Natural progression yep, of absolutely events. natural. Yep. I thought maybe Tommy was going to turn out to be Satan and like creating an army of demon babies with this family or something, but they didn't. Nope. Tommy will disappear from the film. Right. And then we see the nanny out there and <laughs> she's being... Weirdly judgmental about this gigantic baby again. And like, she's the best. She's one of my favorite characters besides the baby. She's just like, yeah, so I'm 100% sure your baby is a demon. And I'm pretty sure you know that too, don't you? 
Yeah, and it keeps panning over to the baby, and the baby's just like, "What the fuck? I'm a I'm a fucking baby." Yeah, it's like, a yeah, of course. <laughs> Every time this <laughs> nanny talks, they will do a reaction, a menacing reaction shot of the baby, and each time the baby's like, "Still a baby, not doing yep, an acting still thing." Still a just baby, know. the fucking most adorable little pudding cup you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted one time <laughs> for them to find the baby in like the room or whatever, and he's just like slowly spinning around in a giant high chair, like, hello, mother. <laughs> Petting a fluffy cat. Oh, crazy billionaire <laughs> remake. So now it's time to head back to the nunnery, and it's time for her to break the bad news that Gino is gone. <laughs> what the fuck is she studying in there? I want a documentary about the veterinary nun. Like, I yeah. want that story told. Yeah, this research facility in a convent is what Jordan Peele must have seen before writing Us. <laughs> There's just like rabbits and bunnies and cats and rats all over the place in cages. It's crazy. Right. But basically, this whole scene is just so she can be like, yeah, hey, Gino's dead. Will you come over? Not right away. I would say two character deaths from now. And she's like, yeah, I'll be there two character <laughs> deaths from now. So, yeah, it's her talking to more people. We got to her talking to more people about, no, he didn't say that he was planning on getting murdered or he didn't write dying in his work journal or anything like that. But this is this is a great moment where we finally see the nun talking to the baby. Right. <laughs> and th this has I'm going to go ahead and say it. My favorite line, which is, come on, Nicholas, why do you cry? Is it because you hate us? <laughs> she also says is my ridiculous mummy tuxedo costume that I wear all the time frightening and the kid's like yes yes it is can you yeah. just wear I civilian wanted clothes to be <laughs> once as a nun I wanted to be like hey Igor the nun you're dressed like a nun don't be shocked <laughs> yeah. that people are looking at you funny right but she, she she leans down to like kiss him or whisper in his ear or something and he he scratches her for the second time. This is the second baby scratch that we will have in this movie. Okay. Hell yeah. I, I feel like he just doesn't like people touching him. And that <laughs> is that not fine? I feel like every baby would do this if they were a demon and they could and they had the power. <laughs> yeah, man. Right? If they were a demon and they could and they had power, sure. Yeah, that's yeah. that's when they would do it. But, but just, <laughs> just as that happens, the doctor comes in uh, and she's like, okay, cool. You... You stay alone with the baby. I uh, I got in a tiny knife fight with him. So I'm going to go get some holy water and a nail gun. Uh, you got this? Yeah, you got this. Oh, so good. So doctor comes to give her some more heroin. Yeah. Right. I was confused about this because literally they've been like, oh, yeah, we're going to take the baby. We're going to put it under observation in the hospital. He does not take the baby at this point. He's just come to give her an injection of something. Yep. He gives her injection and then he wanders in slow motion around the house because he knows he's the baby's next victim. And <laughs> yeah, he goes into the baby's room to play the most epic game of peekaboo ever and baby's not there. <laughs> and then he starts doing everything from every horror movie where the victim's about yes. to get killed. Yes, he does. He's, he's just like, I could swear that was a demon baby saying mwahaha from outside. I will investigate this. <laughs> First, I'm going to take a quick shower, though, with Janet Lee, and then well, that'll be fine, and then I'll go outside. <laughs> so he looks into the septic tank because baby, it's open. Baby's like, oh, what's in there? But as soon as he bends over, he's baby trapped again. Baby literally decapitates <laughs> him with a shovel. And he's look, been decapitated. <laughs> look, yep. we, we didn't have to sell you hard on this movie. But if I needed one <laughs> sentence to do it, it would be a baby cuts off a doctor's head with a shovel. <laughs> but my favorite part of this, it took two takes or shots. They use two. They they edit like the baby ch chops the, the back of the head and it doesn't quite go. And then they're like, <laughs> all right, chop it again, I guess. And then the head <laughs> off all the way. Mm hmm. And while he's doing this, we go back up and uh, what's her name? Lisa? No. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy is ha chasing the dragon upstairs in a trance. She's having, we have like a weird dream sequence. And again, because this movie will never not follow violence with sex and sex with violence, we go straight from 
man decapitated by demon baby to look at her boobs. See? Ah, boobs. Sexy. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Take oh, that right. an entire generation's sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> they might as well have put a giant equal sign on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the sister calls here, Mandy, and she's at the strip club. And the call is just for her to be like, so I'm stripping and you still have a demon baby, right? Cool. Just check in on the plot. Great. Just sum and, things up. <laughs> and we're also watching uh, Hercules, the little person, being part of a vaudevillian stripping dancing musical act that I didn't know was a thing. Yep. Again, yeah, like... These are bet. I would go to strip clubs if these things were happening. It seems like they were like, oh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame one was racist. So we're just going to do a Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, only Fred Astaire's short. So it's funny. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> okay. I guess. I don't know. Put some artistic presentation into your yeah. business. There you go. Good job, Tommy. I like it. I guess. It's definitely more of a vaudeville show than a strip club. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Lucy realizes that the movie only has 11 minutes left. So it's time for her to wander around the house doing all of the uh, scary movie person who's about to die behaviors. And I just want to point out that this movie, like the last four or five scenes that we have described have all taken place over, I would say five or six minutes, which means in the last seven minutes, three characters in a row will check the baby's room, see the baby's not there, walk into the backyard, be murdered. Yeah, the movie is so boring. Like somehow... And that's crazy. Like a baby just chopped the guy's head off with a shovel and there's naked ladies. There's a dancing little person with the naked ladies and like there's scotch and <laughs> golden retrievers. And I feel like nothing's happening. I'm just like so bored by it at this point. Yeah, it's it's quite an achievement. I don't know how you fuck all yeah, that up. Half this movie is people walking around the house yelling someone's name. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, she goes out into the backyard and she looks up in a tree and the baby is in the tree, but he has the dwarf's face? Yeah, no, the baby is actually Hercules now. Yeah. That's I was, what I thought. I was unclear. Is that is that what they're saying? I guess. I don't know. Are they like... I it, don't know, man. But it doesn't show the baby's face until like the end after this. So... Yeah. So, so the dwarf chases her through the house and then... She, he has a here's Johnny moment. Up in the room. Yeah. <laughs> we also get a like a scream moment where the baby demon, maybe little person who magically astrally projects himself also into a demon baby in a different place while he's at the strip club. That's all happening. And we get the like the calls coming from inside the bassinet moment too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but the baby's kind of mad because the it's not from the, you. How would a baby use a phone? So the baby's just like, it's <laughs> I, I, who wants to play a game? No, the, the baby monitor. God damn it. Not the front. I'm in the baby monitor, not the phone. But <laughs> we get that. And then we yeah. And then we get. And he stabs her in the boob, which he never <laughs> tasted. Yep. Stabs her directly in the boob <laughs> and she dies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> did he have a switchblade sword? Is he that did. what the weapon was? He there? did have a switchblade sword. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. I have that. not heard of that. A switchblade with a projectile pommel, for those of you wondering at home. <laughs> so, so she's dead, which means it's time for the nun to come in. She takes her magic book that she got from her library earlier in the movie, and she reads Latin at the baby, which kills the dwarf on stage. Yeah, it's so if I understand this baby is like a Hercules shaped voodoo doll. Yeah, I guess, because whenever she prays at him, Hercules is like, holy shit, how did I get away from this crazy person? But like his he's around his normal people. So like, I don't know. It's crazy. Right. That's yeah. Because at this moment, Hercules is doing his vaudevillian Fred Astaire stripper routine <laughs> and she's praying at the baby and exercising the baby. And he's like kind of dying Having on stage. Attack? Yeah. Yeah. But everybody around him is like, dude, this dying demon bit that you're doing is perfect. You're fucking yeah, nailing it. Nobody Just keep going. realizes it. Yep. Nobody. So yeah, she reads Latin at the baby until she exercises it and therefore kills the dwarf. I got to tell you, she has exercised the dwarf from that baby are lines I never thought I'd write as part of my job. But there they are right there on the page in front of me. So yeah, yep. the, the, the dwarf dies. <laughs> 
And and the manager of the strip club runs out and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, please, please. And I want him to be like, he's just a dwarf. Like, hardly even a guy. You're all like twice <laughs> as upset as you should be. Come on. And like at this point, I hope the nun realizes she's alone in the house with three dead bodies and a baby covered in like blood. Like she looks so guilty at this point. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but will the movie cover it? No. Nope. That is where the movie ends. The the dwarf dies. We watch the cops pull up and then the credits start to roll. And the baby stares deadpan into the camera one more time. Mm hmm. <laughs> I just wrote my notes. Uh oh, that baby's going to jail. Get ready for jail, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, demon baby in jail. Oh. oh, man, that is the sequel to this movie. Google yeah. it. It already exists. There's four of them. Oh. Oh, all right. Lead all us right. to it. Well, uh, speaking of which, I'm thinking before we wrap it up, like we started to give you some ideas, but you're saying that already exists? Mm -hmm. Demon Baby in Jail? <laughs> Demon Baby in Jail, one through four. Four? <laughs> yep. Wow. Okay. So let's help them out with a sequel, but some, some other ideas will move in other directions. So if you guys were a Demon Baby, mm -hmm. Ooh. who's your ideal voodoo connection familiar, if not a magical vaudevillian little person? And what's your go-to murder technique? Okay, uh, I'm going to go with a ventriloquist with cerebral palsy. <laughs> uh, and my method of murder is dropping a water slide on top of them. Wait. You, yeah. You're going to drop, like, you're going to be holding a water slide mm -hmm. above them with your hand? In my CPV helicopter. Okay. And then but I you're drop not it. dropping them, like, a water slide under them and then like they're at Action Park and then no. they die. You're no, just squishing that be, them. That would be ridiculous. I'm dropping a water slide on <laughs> so, top no, of them. No, stupid, stupid. Yes. Yeah, Sorry. Stupid. People who were working on the sequel, it was Eli's thing. Mine Thank was you. Yes, please. <laughs> Get it right. Oh, fuck me. Um, oh, you know, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go uh, political and say my ideal voodoo connection would be Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And I'd say Ooh. my murder technique would be So, Ooh, all right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> See, and you thought it didn't run in the family. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Check Whew. with Andrew about that whole segment. And while that does it for our review of The Devil Within Her, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to get you excited for round two of our Halloween Spooktacular. Spooktacular! <laughs> so, Eli, what is on deck? Along came the devil. Uh, we got Rebecca Vigil, the excellent guest for this one. It's phenomenal. You guys are in for a treat. Rebecca Vigil. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Awesome. All right. So, with that to look forward to, <laughs> we'll bring episode 216 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Anna Bosnick for joining us again. And uh, if people want to hear more Anna stuff, where should they go? Uh, they can go to AnnaBosnick.com or they can find my album on any of the streaming services, which is like Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, look for Sweet. Anna Bosnick, The Ring. Yeah. Check out The Ring. Excellent. Beautiful album. Um, and once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving a five star review on iTunes and Do that. sharing the show on all your various social media <laughs> platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. I hear we might be on Spotify too. Sometimes. Ooh. Like episode three is on Spotify. <laughs> so check out episode three on Spotify if you feel like it. And if you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for the podcast are provided by the law office P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Dress on Mars. All our music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Anna Bosnick and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright. Promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Breakfast clothes. Animal House. Breakfast clothes. We Animal voted. House. We voted on it. Mm. And you lost. All right. Last word. <laughs> Baby Trap went on to become the most popular channel on TikTok. <laughs> 
Vampire Nun never forgot that doctor or the beautiful love they could have shared. <laughs> <laughs> like Anna pointed out, that nun very clearly went to jail when they found dead bodies all over the house, and she said it was a demonic baby that did it. But she had Amber Geiger's lawyer and also white skin, so she got out real fast. Don't worry. She didn't turn into a bat and fly away. <laughs> like Amber Geiger? Yeah, Anna's talking about Amber Geiger. Oh, God. <laughs> Woke up next to an 11 year old. Nope, never mind. That's a, hey, that's a very funny joke, but it's a pedophilia joke. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you knock over your mango nectar? I sure did. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Luckily, it's got it a self-contained. No. Do you no, have a sippy just... cup that pops back up? <laughs> the, that's the nice thing about the thickness of mango nectar is it can't really spill. It's in a ball on my desk. It's fine. <laughs> Pretty it's much. It's basically yeah. toffee in a glass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just drink a glass of caramel while we record. That's why you got that insulin in the other part of the helmet. It's Fucking gross. Right. Balance me out. All right. You want to count us? All right, let's do this thing. You ready for my awesome counting abilities? So ready. One, two, no, three, no, 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 four. No, four. No, what? No, what? No, I was no, doing no, it. No. It was the, the timing was crazy. It wasn't even close to seconds. <laughs> they were different. Anna, I'm you, looking at it. Uh, can just, you count to five? Sure. For Eli? One, two, three, four. Four, four five. 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 That was perfect. Okay. You need to be looking at seconds in order to I get an A plus. <laughs> That's not how it works. I wasn't looking not at just, seconds. Yeah. They're too fast. Seconds are too fast. Randomly anyway. counted to five. Anna, so can I to... talk to you off to the side of this podcast? <laughs> I would like to please Come join me. For a whisper fight? In the basement <laughs> for a whisper fight. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.